Hey, uh, this is Tilak. Welcome to Fast Formula tutorial. Uh, last session, we developed our second Fast Formula. In this session, we see how we can use an array in the Fast Formula. Array, array is the new concept in a fusion Fast Formula. I don't think it is used in the like pure fusion. Now let's see. Okay, I'm not going to explain what is arrays and like you know how the value is stored. Not I'm not going to get into the definitions of arrays. I hope you know that. Okay, the array is used in fast formula as a database item. The array also used in input values. When you are getting input values, they can pass the array as input values. The variable can be array, okay? And you can also return a value as array, okay? But if there is any function you are using, whether you are developing it or seed it, that cannot return an array value, that is not supported. So array can be used as a database item, input values, variables, and return values. In today's session, we see only the database item how we use the database items. Okay, before we are getting to the database item, we see what are the functions or methods available in the arrays. Array count, that basically returns the, the total number of elements in that array. Okay, you can use it as a V count. Though it's a function, it is, there's no need of brackets, okay. And you can get the value from a particular uh, index. Okay, the, the arrays are so arrays are indexed, so you can get the particular value. Your, your one cell or a one elements value you can get it by using the index, which is basically a square bracket, and you are giving the index number that returns. And the first will return that the first index. Okay, now. Fast formula, there's no nothing called uh, null. So what happened, you are giving a default value. Okay. The default, if the, the, uh, the first is not there, basically it's a, there's an array that doesn't have any element. So first is not there. So it will return that, that what value. Here I'm telling, it's a minus one. The assumption is that, that the array is indexed by numbers. Okay. In the fast formula, the array can be indexed by different things. We'll get into the detail later when we see that variables. Now we assume that the array is indexed by numbers. So in this case, we are using a minus one as a default value. So basically, if that doesn't have any value, the minus one will be returned. So, okay, if that return index is uh, minus one, so it means it doesn't have anything, no element exists. The same way you can use the next index, next function, which basically give you that the next index of the index you are passing in. So first of all, example, if the first index you are passing is a five, then probably you are going to get the next index as six, if there is a six exists, okay? And in case if there, it, there's no x, in case of you are in the last element of array, there's nothing called next. So the default, whatever you have to give a default number, the default will be returned. The same approach to prior. Okay, it will give you a kind of a previous uh, element index. Okay, if the previous is not exist, then the default will get it. For example, like you know, if you start with one, if you are telling prayer of one, then the default will be returned. Okay, the last, it is just opposite of the first one. Okay, the last was the last element index. That is also you are giving it this one. Then the, you can delete a particular um, uh, element okay. The DBA you can't delete anything. DBA are uh, like you know input values. You can't delete anything because they are read only. But if you are creating a variable, you can know that the variable can delete something. That's what the delete can be used in the variables. This will delete everything. The whole array will be deleted because there won't be any element. Okay, and the exist basically you can check a particular um, indexes exist in the array. Okay, this is. This is one of the most useful ones. That example is here. If A exists index, you can use it. Or when you are putting in a loop, you can say, well, A exists, then, then the loop. 
this is you can check it okay this is the function basically available in the array of first formula the example of dba okay this dba says it's a effective start date in the history of the assignments basically okay this is a date and number okay whenever there's an array dba you get the, the type two if there's a type says date number or a text that means it's not array. Whenever you see two values like date number, number number, text number, so it means it is array. Okay, and the the, the first in index, what is the value it is? It is a like date is a date value, and then the second part indicates how it is indexed. That array how it is indexed. I think mostly as far as far my understanding, all the DBs are indexed by number. So he is a date value number. The assignment ID is the number value indexed by number. The status type is text by number. This is how you identify. Now let's see what are we going to write. I'm going to I'm going to write the same past formula type. This is an example I'm giving it. What it is going to do here is I'm going to calculate the salary of all the assignments or the jobs a person is doing here. Assume a person is can work more than one um, job in an organization. So I'm going to calculate all the salary, annual salaries, okay? And when I'm picking up the assignment, I'm going to pick up the assignment as of a date, okay? Which was the effective date passed to the formula. That is the date I'm going to use it. And it has to be a valid uh, assignment, means active assignment. I'm going to pick up for that. I'm going to return the total of the salary. And if the salary is more than 50,000, then the person is eligible. It is kind of a like, you know, a hypothetical case I came out just to explain you the first formula. Okay. You know, this, this is a database I'm going to use it. Okay, how I'm determining, I'll explain. It. Now I'll explain what I'm going to use it here. I'm going to use the assignment ID. This is a number number. This is basically, I'm, this is what I'm going to like, you know, loop through that, the, all the assignment for a person. Then I'm going to take a start date and end date. The start date and end date will be having to make sure that is falling within the effective date. Then I am also going to use the status type to make sure it is active. And the latest change, I'm also making sure this is the latest change. So that is the, 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 the perfect row I am using it rather than using a more than one row. There will be multiple changes. If there is multiple changes in a day, then the latest changes, the one we supposed to use. It. So that is what I'm going to use it. Then I'm going to use, like once I determine my assignment ID, write the assignment ID, then I will set the context of the assignment ID. And from that, I'll get the annual salary. So the annual salary will be calculated, I mean, count added into a variable. And if that variable is more than 50,000, then the person is eligible. Okay, that is the logic. Now, when I'm seeing the context, <coughs> This three are okay. This is the route it is used. This all these five DBA coming from one DBA. So I wonder route. The one route is uh, like you know the using the context of personal. So in that case, now what is happening here? It is not using the effective date. It is not using anything else. So the every possible assignment is going to come out. If it's a date track and everything is going to come out. So it became that the formula has to make sure we are picking up the right row or a right assignment ID. That is a, okay. Then the salary, the salary is using the route, which is basically using the HR assignment ID effective date. So basically I'm going to get only one row as of the day and I can correct directly go and get the salary DBA. Okay. Now let me explain you how are how I'm picking up this one. Okay. Let me show you how I'm selecting my database items. Okay. You cannot follow what I do because you may not have access to these kind of applications. Uh, just take the concept from here, not the, the steps. Okay. Now with the database item, for example, I'm starting with uh, working with the assignment ID. Okay, how I choose my assignment ID. Like, you know, I go to my application. Basically, I'm going to the database list. You can, you can 
like you can either use a side statement or you can use that list from the fast formulas page uh, uh, whichever way you work okay this is how i follow okay i know so let me choose the type i need it i need an array so it's a number and number we are looking for an array uh, i am also selecting the username assignment id ID so that filter everything from this end. I also choose it starts with uh, this username. Per. So I can just come and change that to that it starts with per. Uh, there's nothing called starts with. Okay. Okay, I can put a per like. So that is also there. So basically just starting with okay this is what i want but e, not e extra i need e not extract what i need extreme one i'm looking for that okay per history assignment ID. this is what i'm looking for that okay you can choose like you can choose you can go because you know, i avoid ext extras like in a, from the extract one where most of the time they may not have the uh, yeah, this is working only for one assignment ID. I'm looking for everything for a person, not only one assignment ID. Now this is the right one, okay? Now if I look at that, I know that this has got a person ID. Now the problem what here is, when it is just validating a person ID, it is not validating the effective date, it is not val validating this the latest one, or that it is not validating the status type. So it is giving every assignment which is belongs to person. I want to go further one. Like since I'm working on that array, and I have to take the DBA from the same router. Okay, if I take a DBA from the different router, then I cannot work with the index because the index goes right for that, like the, all that, that column coming from the same select statement. So the DBA has to come from from the same router. So now I take the router name, then I go with a different DBA. Okay, here basically I need a start date, date, then basically I say date, so I know that this is the effective start date. Okay, this is effective date. I need a type. So like if I need a type, then I go, I pick up the type, then I go for the type. Okay, the assignment type. I need that. Okay, or the status. I can even I can use assignment type if I want that. Okay, example like yeah, I want to validate assignment type. That is also you can use it. Now you need a status. Now you go for the status type. This is how I pick up. Basically, that when you are when you are working with that uh, array and if you are using that information to validate the the DBA which is coming out of that that uh, the loop. So the, the DBA has to come from the same route. If you are using a different route, the index is not going to work. Okay, whichever way you are routing it. I'll explain you when you are writing a program. Just I'm like telling you how I choose my DBAs. Okay, this is a concept. Take the concept, not the steps, as you don't have access to these uh, applications. Now let's see how we write that fast formula.